Welcome to Shit They Don't Tell You. My name is Steve Green. And I'm Nikki Limo. And we are going to read your questions today, and then we're going to answer your, their, your questions. Yeah, maybe we'll answer them. Maybe we'll just read them and leave you hanging. Maybe we'll read them, and then we'll <laughs> laugh at you. <laughs> and then we'll make fun of it. We'll bully you. <laughs> yeah. We'll be like, what a preposterous question. Stupid. How could you ask such a stupid <laughs> question? <laughs> we're just going to laugh at our loyal subjects today. Yeah, just kidding. Uh, we really like you guys, and thank you for sending in your questions. There's actually a lot of questions. Some of these are left over from the last time we did a Q&A thing yes. that I was like, wow, this is way too many questions. And then there's like even more questions. So and some of them of were emergencies. We'll try to give you our best uh, advice as non-experts in our field right here. But uh, I, like, I don't know. We'll try to be brief, too, because yeah. there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you ready for the first question? Let's go. Okay. Um, 25 and Lost is the title of this question. Hi, Nikki and Steve. My parents were great, but they raised me traditionally and never once mentioned anything near the sex talk other uh, that other kids get. Also, as I'm getting older, my mom has been throwing comments on what type of guy she wants me to look for. It's like if I dare to date a guy that doesn't check all her boxes, I'd be wasting my time, messing up my life, and letting her down at the same time. So because of this, I've never been open with my mom about my dating life, and I've been scared to put myself out there. I didn't even let myself have my first boyfriend until I was 22. So I've been falling hard for this guy I work with. We've been working together for a year and a half now, but didn't start dating until February this year. I just learned that this was because he was dating another girl we work with for the last two years, and they ended right smack at the time we started talking. Oh, I asked him more about it, and it seems like this girl still has feelings for him, but he ended it because she wasn't taking the relationship seriously, and they were on and off during their two years. She still has, she still messages him about once a week, but he says he hasn't. He's not open with her like he used to be and that he would never bother seeing her again if it wasn't for the fact that they work together. I'm worried because I feel like I'm the rebound now and concerned this girl can steal him back whenever she decides she likes him again. This all just makes me feel like a big ass idiot, but I really like him and I don't know what to do. He's already shown he's serious about me, but I'm still very skeptical because his ex still seems to like him. Thank you. Love you guys. I would just like to say I look up to you and Steven. Hope to be in a relationship as strong and as amazing as yours one day. Sarah. Oh, thanks, Sarah. We love you, Sarah. And also, Sarah, why... Are you punishing this man? It sounds like he likes you and is yeah. showing you commitment and you're being you're you're sussing him. Why are you sussing so hard? Well, I could understand. Uh there's I think a lot of your insecurities are coming out and that itself can be kind of a um self-fulfilling prophecy when you are constantly thinking oh they're going to leave going to leave me for this other girl and then they do but that's because you were acting weird towards yes. them. Yes. Um however I understand if this girl's messaging him a bunch and he hasn't told her to fuck off. I that is that is pretty. Crazy. I kind of understand that. But or does he ignore her? Does he respond to her? Yeah, like, what's the deal? She doesn't say in here. She just says that he's just like, hey, it's he brushes it off. Like just, that is crucial crazy. information. I'm sorry, we cannot answer your question today. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving completely on. No, I think that you should take him for his word, and if he ever fucks up then you have a reason to be suspicious or be mad or confront him um but until then i i feel like you can let your guard down a little bit and i think the reason you're worried is because you're worried about getting hurt which is reasonable but i mean unfortunately that's just the risk you take in any relationship is that that person does have the power to hurt you they can break your heart they can sweep the rug out from underneath you and you're going to learn from that. To so either way, whether it works out or doesn't work out, you're going to grow and learn. To quote incredibly popular science fiction uh, f um, novelist? Uh, no, uh, oh. series. Series? Star Trek. Oh, yes. Uh, please reduce shields 50% because you got your shields all the way up, bro. And that is, that's, that's, that is what's going to hurt this relationship. Yeah. May the force be with you. That is not the same yeah. series. Please don't yeah. do that. You force, know that. Nikki, you know force, that and you're trolling. Don't do that. Please don't do that. The, may the force don't be Don't do that. Okay. I know you're... No, that's a Vulcan that's thing. That's not it? That's a Vulcan thing. That's live long and prosper. Don't do that. <laughs> I do. I know you know that, right. but don't do that to me. Sarah, I hope that answers your question. Please just let love be. Let love be. Also, yeah, I get the whole like your parents didn't really... They weren't open about sex and stuff, it's, so you're on a, like, a different learning curve. But I think this is just very normal. This is all very normal for a 22-year-old person. Um, just, yes. let, just let live Jealousy and learn. Jealousy is, is a normal feeling. Yeah. But it's also very, it could really fuck things up if you let it. Definitely. So don't let it. And uh, also, he left you. Or I'm sorry, he left, he left this chick. Yeah, because she wasn't taking it seriously. Give yourself some credit. 
Yeah. And also, if he's the type of person like my husband is, he holds grudges and he's like, no, nah, that bitch didn't take it seriously. Who cares if she wants me back? It ain't happening. I like I like this. But I don't know. I, like I don't this. know if that's who he is. Moving on. Okay. Ask us anything. Hi, Nikki and Steve. Let me just start out by saying I never write these cheesy comments slash questions to anybody, but I did because Steve begged me in the last Q&A episode. I duh. never begged. I don't beg, sir. My question is, it's. I think it's a lady, but I don't know. Um, my question is that I am a normal person who has like 36 Instagram following. I listen to a lot of podcasts on my commute, and I kind of want to start one just so I can record my wisdom and fun, meaningful conversations with my friends. Rolling my eyes in parentheses. Uh, is starting a podcast for family and friends a realistic activity to do? How do I start that? Any suggestions? In all seriousness, I love your podcast. You guys helped me through so many hard days and taught me how amazing sense of humor can magically save the day. I love you anyways, and we'll keep listening as long as you answer my questions just kidding lol it's not like i have anything better to listen to other than bart and geo other than david by the way leave wow. my name out so my boyfriend won't laugh at me <laughs> okay I'll first of all out. please don't compete with us stop plugging our competition yeah that too we don't okay. like that we get jealous yes very jealous uh-huh and it hurts our relationships <laughs> and don't go into competition with us because we are very insecure oh yeah so yeah that too don't go into competition with us quit you should quit. Please quit. Please quit now. <laughs> no, if you're going to start a podcast, it's really just, I mean, podcasts are a niche medium, man. It's not like, you know, we're reaching millions of people right now. We're reaching the people who like this kind of yeah. thing with these kinds of people with this kind of flow. And frankly, you know, you're here for the vibe. Yeah, you're here for the vibe. Um, I think it reminds me a lot of how YouTube used to be back in the day when people were just doing it for fun, like as an outlet. Yes. To talk about whatever they wanted to talk about. And I think that's how... A creative format should be it should be an outlet for you it shouldn't be for the likes or for the money or for the fame or for whatever yeah. it is it should be because it's something that you like doing and like this is fun for us and we would like to take this a minute to uh to plug uh broommate absolutely incredible product thank you yes we would yes thank you but we don't do it for the money no no we do it for this because it's fun <laughs> uh no but see no but honestly like like, think about what, what you find on YouTube. You find all kinds of magical th things that you could have never found on some broadcast medium where everything's got to be cookie cutter in a certain way. If there's something that you like to talk about, chances are there's a bunch of other people out there that like to talk about that. It's, and they like to listen to other people that are talking about it. Especially if you like to talk about it. Yeah. I like to hear people talk about something they, they like talking about. Yeah. So if you have your, like, wisdom and if you're your, passionate. Fun, your fun, meaningful conversation, then, yeah, like, a, a lot of so a lot of people listen to podcasts because they just want to be part of a conversation. Yeah. And so I see no you got nothing to lose. Like, when you look at the, like, risk factor, <laughs> there's nothing to lose. Like, it, besides maybe you get embarrassed if, like, someone goes, hey, this your podcast fucking sucks. <laughs> 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 and then maybe you get embarrassed about it. <laughs> but fuck that person. <laughs> I think it also, it also helps, too, if you have some kind of angle. If, if it is if it is your friends and you fucking around, then, then that's your angle, right? It's like we're yeah. fucking around. Like, that's your show, right? Like, I would just present, just let the audience know what you guys are trying to do. So that way I know what I'm listening to when I'm listening to it. Yeah. So, like, shit they don't tell you. It's, like, all the shit that they didn't tell you. That's it. No one ever told you how to start a podcast. So in terms of, like, how to start one... Uh, honestly, just to record. Like you could record from your iPhone. You can record. I mean, most likely you'd want to get into a place where the the acoustics are a little bit better. So we record our bonus episode for our Patreon. You can check it out, patreoncom slash sticky s t i k k i. If you want, we do a bonus episode of Show They Don't Tell You every month. Um, and we do it in our we closet. record it in our closet with uh like some twenty five dollar microphones yep. and a Zoom microphone or a Zoom. Yeah, a Zoom microphone that it plugs into. And it's really fun. Yeah. We um, split like a $7 bottle of wine. Yeah. Yeah. It's very enjoyable. And we just like get deep with each other. Yeah. It's really actually one of my favorite things that we do, honestly. Me too. Uh, I, and I didn't know that going into it. But for some reason, the intimacy of being in the closet and staring at each other like we are right now. Yeah. Is like actually really dope. Yeah. It's really, it's really fun. I think that you'll find it enjoyable. And... Uh, worst case scenario, you record a couple and then you don't release them to the public. And it was just something that you got to experiment with and have fun with. I'm all about experimenting and like not being afraid to fail at something because then you get to like see how that was. I mean, a lot of people go through their lives and they just never experience anything because they're too scared of failing at it. And yeah. it's just so ridiculous because like, who cares? Like at the end of the day, you're not going to hurt yourself by by like trying something. Yeah, you're and, going in a box eventually. And being bad at it. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
Plus, I cried on on the show, and I and I I don't know. I feel like I I, I just it, it, it's an it's it gives me an ability to open up a little more. Yeah, to be more vulnerable. Reason. Yeah, when you're just talking intimately. Yeah, yeah. When you're not being watched by some weirdo behind a soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so I hope that helps you nameless person that shall be not mentioned because of embarrassment to her boyfriend. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, do it. I'm all for it. And then link us secretly so we can listen to it and bully you about yes. it. Yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you notes. We'll give you all the notes. We'll give you thoughts from the studio is what we'll say. Mm-hmm. All right, next we got, uh, hey, Nick and Steve, thank you for th- taking the time to read my question. I'm a huge fan of you two, and Nikki is like my YouTube ate. Uh, it's ate like older sister in Tagalog. Oh. To be honest, you guys always bring a smile to my face, whether it's this podcast, JK News, or your other channel, so I want to thank you guys again. Aw, you're welcome. Um, anyways, for my question, my friends tell me that you shouldn't rely on outside factors for your happiness and that you should find happiness and acceptance within yourself. I definitely agree with them. As someone who has been diagnosed with clinical depression, those two things are always the hardest thing for me to accomplish and because I had a strict Filip- I had strict Filipino parents that offered no emotional support whatsoever my therapist says I tend to seek out those things for my friends and my boyfriend I realize that's a bad habit and so my question is how can I find happiness and acceptance within myself when my own mind and body chemistry is working against me any advice thanks again have a great day sincerely a sad Filipina for reals please help me first of all thank you very much yes um, thank you yeah this man so you, you need some kind of a, an emotional center that you can that you can build things on top of it sounds like yeah i mean um i think that you okay i might be wrong about this but maybe you are scared of being alone a lot of people don't find uh that within themselves because they're never letting themselves be alone because i don't know they have a fear that of loneliness or i don't know what they're scared that they'll find but um there's people that i I know that just always have to be hanging out with somebody they always gotta have a roommate or they gotta like be with their friends or be with their boyfriend because they're just so scared of being alone uh my biggest advice to you would be to like spend a lot of time alone like carve out alone time like whole days half days if you want to start with a half day uh but when you're alone with yourself and i I don't mean alone watching tv i mean like alone alone like where you're alone you're writing in your journal you're going on a hike alone maybe you go eat at a restaurant alone or uh cook food for yourself and eat alone like just Doing things alone. Alone with your own thoughts. Yeah, alone with your own thoughts. Like, like even even being alone, listening to a podcast is not really it's what not we're really saying. It's not really being alone. Yeah. yeah you, got, you got to be alone with your own thoughts. Like not letting someone else direct your thoughts and finding out what your thoughts are when you're alone. Yeah. Because you have no emotional centers, what it sounds like. Meditate. Meditation's hard for people because you have a hard we as people just have a lot of thoughts I and mean, it's hard to clear out those thoughts but if you can take the time and practice meditation, you can like get to this emptiness place I don't know how else to describe it but I feel like there's this place of emptiness that I often felt during depression was where my most creative times were because you're when you're completely empty is where like this creativity flourishes and I think that I used to you know a lot of artists say like oh I can only create work when I'm depressed I used to think that I was when I did stand-up comedy, I used to think I was only funny when I was depressed. And so when I was happy, I was like, man, I lost it. Uh, but really, I think you could find that through meditation, too. It's just getting to that very, very core center of yourself and then making yourself smile or laugh in some way. Like, it, what what do you think about that makes you smile? What, what actually causes those tingly feelings of joy? Uh, maybe it's adopting kittens. Maybe it's like... Um, cooking a really fun recipe where you get to eat a pie and you never made a pie before you know for me it's like trying something new like a doing like a new thing learning something new some new skill yeah and writing I f- a piece i feel like for me i'm just coming out of like a probably three-year depression cycle that i was in yeah and so i i i've really loved going to the gym it's been fucking great for me yeah like just to know that i'm doing that every day is a great platform I can build on top of because you know I lost my YouTube channel all that stuff happened and I just didn't know what to do about it so I've just been sort of spinning in darkness I feel like yeah and so just having at least a base level thing that I do every day no matter what to improve myself yeah to is improve yourself incredibly helpful for me yeah I think in being able to look at a physical form of progress 
yes, like that extremely. is really nice. So whether it's going to the gym and you see your body changing and that gives you this, does it, doesn't it give you that sort of satisfaction of like, Absolutely. ooh, like I'm making progress, which which in turn gives you self-esteem and it gives you happiness and joy and all those feelings. And then you're attracting more of the same kind of feelings from other things that you're doing. Maybe it motivates you to go write more of a script or yeah. write, you know, do a better job somewhere else in your life. Um, I think that creative outlets like like for me arts and crafts type stuff like DIY stuff does that because I started out with nothing there and then I made a thing you know when I was like crocheting mittens I like came up with this mitten design and then I made, made these mittens and then people would compliment me on them and want me to make them for them and then I would make them for other people and they would light up and it was like I brought something into the world that wasn't there before. Same with stand-up, same with acting, same with writing, same with anything I've ever done. I feel like I've brought something into the world that brought other people joy that wasn't there before. And that makes me really happy. But I didn't, I wasn't born knowing that. You know, like that was something that came through from being alone, from like really taking the time to do something that I found brought me joy with no reward, you know, without any sort of like, oh, I'm going to get paid for this or I'm going to get um, popularity or whatever. It was purely just to like put more joy in the world. And I like that. So I think there's something out there for you that you can do that you'll find if you let yourself be alone, truly. And if you cry when you're alone, if you're like, if that's what emotion comes up, let it out. Like that's you write it down in a journal. Maybe track your emotions while you're alone. Stuff like that. I don't know. You'll figure it out. I'm excited for you. All right. <laughs> this one's in all caps. Please respond. Am I settling? I need your help. I listen to your podcast on a daily. Hi, Nikki and Steve. I'm a big fan of your podcast and YouTube channel. I've been watching for three years now and I love how real you guys are. Oh, thank you. Okay. So I'm writing this email because uh, I honestly want your help and advice. My my life is a mess. Prepare yourself. From the outside, you would think that my life is wonderful. I'm 21 years old. I just turned 21 in April. Currently, I'm engaged, buying a home, and have a great job. Oh, my gosh. it's amazing. But it wasn't always like this when I was 14 years old. I met a guy through Facebook. Since I was so young, I, I was kind of just playing around, and I got hooked. Not a bad thing, but seven years later, we are still dating. He's currently 23, and I am 21. We've been through a lot. We were in a long-distance relationship, and we have been for quite some time. He went to school out of state, and when he was home, we were 40 miles away, which is about an hour away. I was lucky enough to go to college at a community college where I successfully graduated with my associates this year. While attending school, I was working at a restaurant. So after graduating, I was able to get an amazing job. I now work for the county slash government. No, not to sound scary at all. LOL. Here's my problem. I love him, but am I settling? I've never had any other boyfriends. My parents are very old school and believe that sex should be after marriage, not before. Him and I have been waiting until marriage, which makes me think he is a keeper because not everyone will wait that long until sex. We are currently in the process of buying a new home. Yay. The only Holy affordable, shit. They're yeah, buying a home yeah, together and yeah. they haven't fucked. Uh huh. Whoa. And they've been together for seven years. What the fuck? The only affordable housing is no near offense. this hometown, making me move away from my hometown. Oh, it's near his hometown. So we both live with our parents right now, and this will be the first time we live together. I have been an only child and was raised by a single mom that makes me super attached to my mother. Even though it's an hour away, I live in Colorado. There is snow. I can't plan to go o over there every other weekend or such. We are going to have to buy a home near his parents' home. His parents don't like me. Every time I say something, they believe I'm uneducated, worthless, or not good enough for his son. This surprises me because most parents love me, and I have tried for them to like me for the past seven years. I've mentioned this to my significant other, but he just says that I'm the one who's being sensitive. I mentioned this to some adults, and they think I shouldn't be with him since the parents don't like me. My new job is in his hometown. Currently, I drive an hour to work until we buy a house together, which hopefully will end at the end of June, which hopefully we will at the end of June. I love my new job, especially since I've never had benefits and sick time, etc. I don't know what I want or what I should do. Am I the problem? And am I the one who's overthinking everything? I know I should be happy because I'm grateful to be able to get a home, have a good job and have an amazing fiance. But why do I not feel like that? Thank be you. Be I appreciate you even just reading the email. Thanks, May. Because you're overthinking everything. I disagree. You disagree? Oh, yeah. I think that on paper, she's like, hey, my life looks good on paper. Why do I feel unhappy? And I think oh, it's because... Okay. Wait, does she feel unhappy? Because it sounds like she thinks everything's going really great, but then she's no, confused she says, as to whether she should... She says, I know I should anyway. be happy because oh, okay. I'm grateful to... She's grateful. Right. She's able grateful. to recognize grateful. that, wow, what a great life. But why is she not happy? You know? Yeah. Well, I... Um, 
to is, me, I think your intuition's telling you something. What's the lack, though? I, I I guess I'm not clear on that. Like like it sounds like she's upset that the pa- the in laws won't like her. The in laws don't like her, and she's basically sacrificing everything to move to this guy's hometown right, to I buy see. a house. So she's leaving her family, which she's super attached to her mom. Okay, that's a bummer. Yeah, and it's snowy, so even though it's an hour away, it's not like she can drive there all the time. Gotcha. Yeah, and so she just feels like. She's giving up a lot, and then the, his parents don't even like her. And also, uh, one thing that really stood out to me was she said that she's confronted him about his parents not liking her, and he's just like, "You're being sensitive." Well, I wonder. Um, I wonder what that is, right? With the parents, is it that the parents don't like you, and they tell you they don't like you? Is it a very like, are they just like affronting all over you every time you see them, or is it more of like a subtle thing, like? They get digs in and he can't recognize it or whatever. Well, she says that every time she says something, they believe that she's uneducated, worthless, or not good enough for their son. Right. So are they like, <laughs> that was stupid. Why the fuck did you say that? You know what I'm saying? I, I'm yeah. wondering. Maybe they or correct her Or do they just keep him? looking at the TV or something when she says something? Like, I wonder what that relationship is exactly. Yeah. Whether she's projecting it or Right. Or if, if she's overthinking real. it because maybe she's hearing the responses and going like, oh, they don't like me. Yeah. They you, know, you, you know, I, I'm not saying that what she's... Um, that she's incorrect in the diagnosis. Yeah. I just don't know. Right. We don't know. But based off what she's saying, which is all we have to go off something of. something missing. Um, I, yeah. I, uh, personally, I would, I wouldn't like to be somewhere where I'm invalidated all the time. No, of course. And, um, and especially if you're making that, those kind of sacrifices and it's not for yourself, it's all for him. Like, cause the job she got is in his hometown, but she says, uh, she loves her new job because she has never had benefits in sick time. But she doesn't know what she wants or what she should do. Right. So what, what, why does she love the job? It sounds like she loves the job on paper then. Yes, exactly. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. Okay, it sounds like it. you like your life on paper. Yes. But because it's it's the American dream. It's what everyone wants. Right. It's like you have a great fiance and you have a great job. And what more do you want? You know, you should be happy. You know what it you is? You should be so lucky. She overthinks in her head and she underthinks in her heart. Oh, that's great. That's, that's, that's a good quote. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. I don't think Look at you that. Could, you know, I don't think I've even that read down. that anywhere. You taking notes? Thank you. Take some notes. I could see that on like a plate of dishware at Target or something. You're in, also very young. She's also very, very, yeah, young. very young. I mean, they met when she was 14 years old. Right. You know, and the fact that you've never had sex before, um, I, I get the the whole religious thing about uh, waiting till marriage for sex. I was raised that way too. Okay. Um, having broken that thinking I was going to marry the person Same. I lost my virginity to. Uh, I'm so glad that I went and experimented first before marrying someone before sex yes. because you might just not have any chemistry. And that sucks because um, like on paper, it's great. And like, wouldn't it be great if you loved each other, yes. you know, and like really did. But what if it's like my sister and <laughs> she didn't have sex so she got married either. Yeah. And then I don't think her husband did mm-hmm. so what if they're just two dead fishes on top of each other but they're like hey i'm having a good time <laughs> well yeah because ignorance is bliss like right? you, you don't know what you're missing out on yeah. so you know for all you know it's the best thing my baby ever. brothers did the same shit sure 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 i'm not no i'm not knocking it i know you're not knocking it i'm, not I'm just it. talking about the um that... i'm just saying if you're unhappy in your heart because for yes. your baby brother he still felt very in love like oh, did it, sure. he didn't have like these kind of reservations, yes. right? Yes. And so I think your intuition is kind of pointing you in a certain direction and you are trying to logically talk yourself out of it, which I've been there. Like a lot of times I'm like, well, logically I should like this, but why don't I? And yeah. it's because there's something inside you telling you otherwise. And I th- feel, this is just my belief, that that is more indicative of your true purpose or your true direction than what logically is what society says you should want in your life. Yeah, so whatever your that feeling is, maybe you should listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so. And I don't know But then what should that's she do? a really hard thing to say to what what you, you do is the hard thing. Because yeah, then if you break up, that's like a whole relationship of seven years. It uh, like and it's she's scary. relatively happy in the relationship. I didn't hear her complain about the guy I don't, much. I except don't know. He doesn't listen to her about I the I think parents. that she says she's happy because it sounds good on paper. And that she says that he's okay, he this well, the thing that makes her think he's a keeper is just because he would wait that long to have sex. Oh right. 
it's not she That's doesn't not enough, bro. she doesn't say like oh i love him because i do this and that yeah do you know what i mean we do this and that and i love him and right. this and that yeah there's a difference when yeah. i'm talking about you i'm talking about all the things i love about you i'm yeah. not talking like well he has a good job and he brings right. in x amount of money and we could live on that and um you know he, i think he'd make a good father probably right. and he you know i'm not talking like that yeah. i'm talking about a connection that we have and like it just doesn't sound like it's here do you think i'd be a good dad though nah Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, I think you'd be an amazing dad, actually. <laughs> and I was just putting on the tea for you. <laughs> Knock it down, swat yeah, it down. I can't let is. you have things. I know. You don't get compliments. I know that. Don't be searching for compliments before I'm not you here for that. get them. You got to earn those if compliments. If I was here for that. You have to be a dad for 20 years before I tell you, hey, you know what? I think you did a good job. In our next life, though, <laughs> I think that I'll be pretty set up for compliments from you. Probably you get you earn a lot of you earned a lot of it. I'm excited about and it. And I just won't even know why I'm complimenting you. I'm like, I just feel like you deserve this. Yep. Um, but I had a similar thing on, on paper in a relationship I was in for five years where I felt like everything looked good on paper. He understands me. He's a good guy. He does all the right things. Uh, we've been together for five years. I've been with a chick like that. You yeah. know, yeah. and it was comfortable. Yeah. But um, I find if someone's too agreeable, uh, even though it was on paper, I was like, I don't know who you are. It wasn't even that sh- he was too agreeable, although I've dated that too, and I and that only lasted two months. Yeah. Um, it was more just like it was comfortable, but there was something missing that I couldn't put my finger on. And I decided to take the risk of breaking up, but at first I was like, let's just go on a break. And we were living together at that time, and we separated. And through that separation, I found I didn't miss him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when I realized like we just didn't have – this chemistry and I started getting having this like whole crisis where I was like maybe love's not real maybe that's all love is is that. like it should have been I should have stayed with him because it was comfortable and I'll never find a guy that's good to me like that again yep. and I thought maybe I made a huge mistake but there was a part of me deep down that that felt like maybe there maybe it's still real maybe yeah. that I could find a real thing and maybe I was happier without it I did the same shit yeah I was like maybe love is just science and yeah love is like sticking with your person and having fights every other day but it doesn't matter and all because you shit. made a commitment right and yeah. like love is sticking with your person and I'm like man bro and I've even you know I was actually talking with our friends the other day and they were kind of repeating a lot of this stuff and I was I just disagree me too and I, it's hard to explain it to someone who's never experienced like real right. like love love. But then it's impossible to be like, hey, you guys in your relationship, I don't necessarily think that you're experiencing love. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no. How do you do that? Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't. Yeah. That's so it's not like, like, oh, that's not my business. But if you're gonna if you write me an email and you want my opinion, yes. uh, I will tell you that I don't think this is I think this might not be like love love. I think yeah. and I maybe just try going on a break i don't know see if that works for you i don't know if that ruins anything but i just think that if you make a choice and it doesn't work out then it wasn't meant to be you know for sure so there's you're so young you're allowed to make these kind of mistakes or like if it is a mistake let it go and if it comes back it's it's, yours to keep you know what i'm saying yeah boom boom we got so many t-shirts for you. I'm putting so many balls on the tees, and Nikki is hitting home runs with them. Oh, my gosh. Can you hit home runs with t-ball? Yeah. Little League home runs. Aww, They're hilarious. <laughs> They're, like, all excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i never seen it, though. Oh. That's how you know it's real. Well, like, can you imagine a three-year-old actually hitting it out of the park, like, 300 feet or something? Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, no, he doesn't have to hit it out of the park. He just has to hit it farther than the other three-year-olds. Oh, true. <laughs> well, the best shit is when they hit it off the tee, and then they don't really know, quite know where to run, and the coach has to yell, like, go that go way, that, that way. way. <laughs> <laughs> and they start running that way. Dude, I wish it was like that in life, though. Oh, Everything's for sure. set up for you on a tee. Oh. You just do it. Yep. And then you're like, what do, what do I do now? And, and like, someone's that like, way. that way. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I got st- it. Yep. I got this. Start waddling over. Yeah. Oh, if only. That would be amazing. But they don't, and that's why we have this podcast to that's right. <laughs> help you out on uh, shit that they didn't tell you. We're the coach. Like where to, how to go to first base. Sexually and... Nice. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah. Get it to yourself. You yeah, put the ball on the team you know yourself, saying? and yeah. then you hit it. I could do it. What do I need you for? I know. What I... <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I'm out of job. All right. On that note, we are going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, I'm really excited about our next sponsor. Same. Because do you like alcohol? I have a lot of questions. I really enjoy it. Okay, I actually don't have that many questions. Do you like warm alcohol? I do not. There's no case where I enjoy warm right? alcohol. Right? Imagine 
having to go somewhere and then like your alcohol, you're like, ooh, alcohol, I love it. There's an open bar, but then all the drinks are really warm. Oh. Imagine going to like the beach and you're like, oh, I, I got an idea. I'll bring my wine to the beach and it'll be a good time and uh, I'll eat all my snacks and then you pour the wine and it's like burning hot. No, can't because do it. Even warm, I can't the sun do it. Is, the sun is hot. Okay, so with Brewmate, which is our sponsor today, and I'm freaking stoked on them because we've used this company quite a few times. Yes. Uh, we use their wine solator with the little wine mugs with that come with it, the wine glasses that come with it. And uh, they keep the drink, the temperature that you take it out of the fridge at, if it's cold wine, then you, t- you take it out of the fridge, they keep it that temperature. If it's room temperature wine, they keep it that temperature. It and stays it stays put. that temperature the entire day. It doesn't go up a degree. It doesn't go down a degree. It stays exactly. Put. I mean, I didn't use a thermometer, but I, huh. my mouth says it stayed the same temperature. And my mouth said, "Hey, give me more of that wine." Right. It was very enjoyable. I've got to say, one of the best inventions I've ever come across. I think it's better than the car. Many, I'm like many inventions. I'm like, but can this deliver alcohol to my mouth at a reasonable temperature? And Co- I have to say, the answer is no. M- most of the time every time we film the podcast every time we get back into our car the car seats are scalding hot it burns the back of our legs mm-hmm. we scream nikki yells and then you drink wine before <laughs> no <laughs> it's only brewmate would friggin sell cars oh true because then i would get in the car and i'd be like that's exactly it's the same what temperature a pleasant temperature this you know is what I'm yeah totally okay so you got to check them out because everyone also they come in really great colors. Mine's like a sparkly pink color and it looks like a unicorn and people are always like, "Where do we get this thing?" Well, guess what? Don't settle for warm alcohol. Chill out with your favorite drinks all day long with Brewmate. Go to brewmate.com and add the code U, that's Y O U, to get 15% off your first order. That's 15% off your first order when you go to b r u n a t e.com and add code Y O U. Do it. Get the brewmate. We'd love it. yourself a favor and your tongue. So a favor. And it makes a great gift, frankly. Yeah, it does. If you care about that. If you care about giving people nice gifts, maybe you don't. Hello. Welcome back. We have a voice message for you next, and hopefully it's real sexy. Please use sultry voices. I, by the way, I don't vet these before we do them on the show. No. Maybe I should, but... Hi, Nikki and Steve, and probably whatever guest is on with you guys right now. Um, my name is Abby, and I am currently engaged. I'm getting married in uh, April of next year. And me and my fiancé are trying to figure out um, how to handle, like, finances. Like, we're in the process of trying to get a joint account together and, like, figuring out who pays for what and, like, what do we split and, you know, how to, that, how to manage that whole art for situation so I was just wondering how you guys got around that I know that like Nikki handles the finances mostly for you guys but um yeah if you can give me some pointers to point us in the right direction that would be very helpful um thanks bye take it away Nikki I'm gonna go to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> uh honestly that was actually kind of hard when we combine finances because I'm so used to working independently you know, you make your money, you do whatever you want with it. I make my money, I do whatever I want with it. If you want to buy me dinner, that's very sweet. Um, if I buy you a birthday present, you know, yeah. that's me giving to you. And so when we combined our finances, it was really weird for me because I was managing both of our money, but I wasn't sure, like, do I have an allowance or like, right. what, what am I? What do I spend? What is he allowed to Sam, spend? Um, it's so strange. It, can I put his money into the same investment funds that I'm putting my money into? It was uh, it, it was a little confusing, and I don't blame you for being confused at all. I'm like, when I buy Bitcoin, is that her Bitcoin too, or is it just <laughs> yeah. my Bitcoin? What's going on with it? I mean, obviously, if you sign a prenup, then you guys, you know, it's whatever you have That's right. set up, then you do. But we did not sign a prenup. No, we did and, not. Um, yeah, everything is shared. And for us personally, I just decided to manage it as if it was my account, like how I was doing it before, because that's all I knew how well, to she's do. She's so good at it. Her dad's a CPA, right? So she was she's been given a base level of knowledge that is like beyond the norm. Like you're in the upper yeah. ninety percentile of regular folks when it comes to finances. I guess so. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. 
he did teach me from a very young age, and I talked about this a little bit on the Hey Bitch podcast episode where we talked about finances, just basics and stuff. Um, he would do things with me like um, if he borrowed some of my money from my allowance, like I had a piggy bank, and sometimes he needed cash. Mm -hmm. So he'd borrow a five, and then he'd pay me back $5.25, and he would teach me about interest. Love it. Like when you borrow from someone, you have to pay them back with interest. And so when he would give me money, I would have to pay him back with interest. Hilarious. And he still to this day, if he borrows $10 from me, he'll pay me back $11. Is that right? Yeah. So it He's, was- He taught you though. Yeah, he did teach me that In from practice. a very young age, which made me seek out, you know, like accounts that give you interest, which is like usually credit unions or online bank accounts like Ally. Yes. Uh, will give you a higher interest rate. On, You're 1% with them, right? No, it's 2.5 two, it's I think right now. That's great. Which, which is means awesome. what? Tell them. Oh, 2.5 interest rate. Well, this is this could be a whole separate episode, but it's uh yeah, whatever you put in there, they will give you 2.5% of that just in free money for extra money cuz essentially they're borrowing they're borrowing from you. Yeah. When you take out a loan, you're borrowing from them, so you have to pay the interest. Unfortunately, like you have to pay way more interest when you borrow from them <laughs> than yes. when they borrow from you. Oh, but yes. hey, that's how that's the way the cookie crumbles. Um, so anyway, back to managing finances between two people's shared account. And this is going to be completely up to you guys as a couple. I don't know if he's willing to just have you do the finances. For me, that's how it worked out. Steve is very like, here, you take over. Here's my yeah. money and you put it all in this with your money and you do what you want Even with it. Even before we merged our bank accounts, just watching how Nikki, with discipline, because, you know, we would all we would get checks and stuff. And Nikki takes half of her check every time and puts it in the into savings account. Yeah. And I'm a fucking idiot who had parents who ran up debt their whole lives. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't know any of that. stuff. Oh, yeah. Wow. When we got together, when we got together. I was in like crazy tax debt. Yeah. We just kept getting letters from the IRS. I'm and like, I was what like, is this? And I'm like, you got to hide the IRS <laughs> letters are here. <laughs> like I was like, I was like, I was what like, the oh, man. fuck? I was like. If I saw like SWAT team or some shit, I was like, oh man. And it was Today's like the day. thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Where I was thousands. like, how are you even, how did this happen? I was like, shh, I think someone's outside. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was because you were used to working as an employee yes. where they withhold W2. your taxes. And then you worked as a freelancer and didn't realize they ain't holding your taxes uh -uh. for you. No, sir. Uh, yeah, so that was very important to know. If... I always heard rumors about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't know you were one? Dude, I you know, true story. Uh, I remember a very famous popular YouTuber coming into Maker Studios one day. I won't say who. You'd all know his name. He comes in. It's not Shane Dawson. He comes in and he's crying. Mm -hmm. He's crying his his eyes out. And I'm like, oh my god! Like, who, like your, your dad died or something like that? And he's like, I just found out I have to pay like a million dollars in taxes. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I had no idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it, it fucking blows, man. <clears throat> but um, what's cool about a freelancer position is that you can write off a lot of stuff. So you can, you know, get the deductions. But uh, yeah, it freaking blows. So I would put away 50% of my check because thirty, at least 35% was going to go to taxes. Yes. And then you should be saving uh, and investing at least 15%, at least 10 but uh, like, you know, Preferably 15 to 20% mm -hmm. of your money should go into savings and investments. Um, I'm so, nodding right now as if I know, but I learned all this through Nikki, so I'm nodding. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, that's how we had, you know, money when you did want to invest into cryptocurrency. Like That's right. Uh, who gave you some money from the from the savings account until so you got paid. Yeah. God bless. Um, so anyway, decide who's going to be in control of the finances. I feel like it's better when one person is in control of them because if there's two people... For example, sometimes he spends money on a card that, and I'm like, wait, what was this for? Because yes. I, I'm checking the statements every other day or like, I check it at least twice a week. Yeah. And so I'm aware of our normal spending habits. And then when there's something out of the norm, I'm like, wait, what was this from? Like, what is this $200 charge? But if there's two people doing that, then that's, that's too much. That's too many cooks in the kitchen, in my opinion. For sure. Um, I think that you guys should definitely have conversation where you talk about like hey here's where our finances are now here's what i'm going to do to manage them this is where i'm going to put 10 percent of our money or you know whatever if you have a 401k plan you know whatever it is decide what you guys can come to an agreement on as far as finances goes and then one person manages it and if that person fucks it up 
then the other person starts managing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, good luck to you. I mean, it's it's really interesting. It's weird too. Birthdays and Christmas. It's really weird because it's super strange. It's like, well, I'm buying you something, but it's coming from your money too. We don't even really do it anymore. So, yeah, that's why we stopped doing we it. We just want to do trips. We just started putting our money into trips. We're not instead of gifts. We're not gifts people. We're anyway. really not. When it comes to <laughs> each other, especially, we did it in the beginning because we're so similar in how yes. we just wanted to impress each other. Yes, we're like I'm a romantic and Steve's a romantic, so. When I picked out a gift that he had been talking about months ago, and then I remembered, it was more about like, hey, this was really thoughtful and personal. Exactly. And same vice versa. And it, it, I think it worked. We really impressed each other. And now I'm go, I'm like, hey, Nikki, Packers are playing uh, first week in uh, like in yeah. L.A. Yeah. Do you want to go? Yeah. Instead of like wrapping it in a gift and like surprising me with the tickets. Yeah. 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 It's so. actually, it's actually. I think the day before your birthday they're playing, or I think it might be on your birthday. Oh shit! Yeah, that's yeah. tight. They're playing in L.A. That's dope. Do you want to go? Yes, I would. Are okay. you asking me? I Is am. this a date? Yes. You're asking, you're seeing a live well, date that, proposal. That's how I have to do it now because she's my financial manager now too. So I'm like, can, <laughs> yeah, can, can, can we, we do, do this? Can, can we, we do? <laughs> Is this chill? <laughs> I think we can do it. Okay, good. Perfect. If we vlog about it. Oh, true. Maybe it could be a write-off. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Next. This oh, is- by the way, are we getting a camera? Hmm? Are we getting a camera, a vlog camera? Uh, we are, yes. Okay, cool. Just checking. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's are, how this shit works. That. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, it's true. And well, I mean, it's a little different too with us. There's a business account, and then there's a personal account, and um, because we we own our business together, and then we also have our personal account together. So everything's together. And we actually have meetings together. As we a, do, it's and it's funny. And we do roll call, and we I'm do, like president here, here vice <laughs> president, <laughs> president. Yeah. yeah, it's fun though, cause uh, and they're, and they're they're actually we take them seriously. Like yeah, when we we're do. in them, we talk about whatever we want to do with the show or with yeah, um, um sh- with our sticky show. And like, and here's stuff. our budget for this month. Where yeah. do we want to put it? And then sometimes we can do like we just did this one video where we bought expensive versus cheap wines, and yes. we did like a blind taste oh, test. We had a freaking <laughs> was really blast. fun. That was awesome. That was hilarious. I can't wait for those videos to come out. I think they yeah. they might be up by the time this comes out. Yeah. I don't know. Check check out my YouTube channel. This is a plug. This is no, a plug. It is a plug. YouTube.com slash Nikki Limo. They're worth it, I tell you. Yeah. But um, anyway, moving on. Okay. The, the title of this email is Feeling Like People Secretly Hate You. Don't I relate to this? Oh, wow. This is like a Nikki question. I feel like this is me writing myself. That'd be great. <laughs> okay. Hi, I always get the feeling that my friends secretly hate me, even with people I have known for years. Oh my God, yes. Because of this, I don't reach out to people a lot, which makes them feel like I don't like them and we drift apart. Not long ago, I found out that my group of guy friends kind of quote unquote replaced me with another girl. Parentheses, I know this sounds really stupid, but I do feel replaced in parentheses. And they are often talking to each other in group calls and I'm not invited. To be fair, I didn't really talk much to them for the last few months, but like I said, I'm scared of reaching out to people and they never reached out to me. So to make things worse, this girl used to be in my friend group in middle school and she used to pick on me and another girl in the group a lot. And eventually we had a big fight and she left slash we made her leave. Since then, whenever we bump into each other at birthday parties, etc., we just act like nothing happened. I don't know how she feels about me, but I would rather not hang out with her. A quote unquote sister problem to this is that I struggle with getting along with people my age, which is 17 to 18 years old. I have always been mature for my age and I hate saying that because I sound like those 16 year old girls who call themselves mature because they're dating a 20 year old guy who can't get with the <laughs> women his own age. I like but, you. Yeah, but I really don't act like people my age. And on top of that, I am also an introvert who's scared of letting people know, or letting people in and terrified of being judged. You mentioned that you used to feel like people secretly hated you. So I was hoping you had some advice. Also, we are really similar and have pretty much the exact same interests. So if you want a new friend, please hit me up. This isn't a joke. I'm in desperate need. Thank you. Please keep me anonymous. <laughs> Is she 18? Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, okay. 17, 18. Yes, I do think we're very similar. We can be friends then if you're 18. Let's be let's be friends. Oh well, she says 17, 17. to 18. We'll be friends after you turn 18. Yeah, yeah. Then it's not. That's not weird. Weird at all. and illegally illegalish. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. You know. Hey, I really relate to you. Um. I feel like I still struggle with this. There are still times when, even though I have friend groups and I'm very close to those people and I would have their back f- with anything. I do get triggered sometimes where I just feel like maybe they all secretly don't like me. Nikki does this all the time. Yeah. And I often have to talk her off of ledges because... It's happened to me so many times in In middle school, in elementary, in high school that I just can't trust anyone. I have trust issues. Yes. Because... In those instances, I was very, I felt very close. I felt like, yay, we're all friends. And then I would find out they all had birthday parties without me or they all like one hung out without me. And then I was 
really really hurt by it and then like a friend would tell me like oh yeah hey so and so and we all got together and we decided that we you're just a little bit too annoying <laughs> i'm like oh my god and i get it i get it i could be annoying i, I totally get <laughs> but it. but i would rather have somebody just tell me to my face so i could adjust my behavior and be more like conscious about it than everyone deciding not to hang out with me and going behind their, my back and you're then i annoying. find out about it i know so let's see you adjust now oh well i'm not being annoying right now am i being annoying right annoying. now that was semi-annoying it was annoying yeah a little bit what was annoying that was annoying just what you what said what was annoying about it it was just a little whiny Okay, so maybe if I, maybe if I just did it oh, wow. one time, I was like, That's not "Hey, annoying. Steve, oh shit, want to go catch a movie and get some pizza later?" I, I do. Hell yeah! You're really cool, by the way. <laughs> Hell yeah! I do think I'm way cooler when I, when I have a lower voice. <laughs> you do, don't you? That's amazing. You actually do do that. That's do so that. funny, man. I think it puts me in a different like headspace. Wow. You know, talking in a higher voice, it's like, oh, I'm up here. My energy's like, yeah. that's very annoying. But down here, it's like, hey. I'm fucking chill. <laughs> <laughs> you could share a secret with me. That's fucking funny. I won't tell your secrets. I know you actually <laughs> legit think this right now. That's why it's, it's funny. It's, you know, it's not that I think it. It's that I feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that if, and this is the same thing with acting. If I change my voice a little bit, I it's a different character. And mm -hmm. I, I have a completely different vibe and a different feeling. And it's in my body. Yeah. It's like I feel like a different person. You're a cool girl. Yeah. 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 Which is why I actually love going to places where nobody knows who I am because I get to pick who to be that day. That's fun. And it's really fun. I got to do that when I moved to, from the East Coast to yes. here. Yes. Yes. pretty cool. When I moved to LA, yeah. when I, whenever I got a new job somewhere, uh, when I would w start working with a new, uh, on a new production or like if I booked like a, a show or something, it was a whole different cast of people that didn't know me. It was fun because I could just be whatever i could feel the group out and just be that you know just be like whatever i wanted to be in that moment yeah. instead of oh i come with like a bunch of labels already on me right you know and i think in this case yeah in this case you gotta just if you're never gonna have deep friends if you're constantly questioning everything i also think that when you feel something you should just address it immediately yeah. i started doing that like uh this just happened in Vegas, and I've talked about this before, I think. I don't know. Maybe I haven't. I but so. in uh, so JK, the Just Kidding News, the group that we work with and we hang out with a lot, uh, they do a, a Vegas trip. And it was in April? Yeah, April. And I had this dream that nobody liked me for some reason, like while we were there. Yes. And then I woke up feeling like it was real. Like it was still just in my body that everyone didn't like me. And- you're there on was the verge no of tears. Reason. There was no reason for it. Yeah, yeah, I was on the verge of tears. There was no fucking reason for it at all. And I would be, I'm able to like logically say, tell myself like, hey, let's not jump there when it doesn't have to go there, right? Maybe you got triggered by your dream, whatever, but it's not real. But I found that when I when we all met up later, just telling one of the girls like, hey, I'm so weird. Like I'm having all this anxiety for no reason. And um, I just like get this thing sometimes where I feel like everyone hates me. And I know you guys don't hate me, but like I just get that sometimes. So if I'm acting weird, like it's not you. I'm just like going through a weird thing right now. And then later they all took a picture without me. And I was like, what the fuck, bitch? Yep. I told you I was having these feelings. That's a pretty good troll. Though. <laughs> it's a good troll. But at least I could... Uh, I could make a joke out of it yeah. because I'd already addressed it. Yeah. It wasn't me like, see, look it. They took a picture without yeah, me. Yeah, it's no, like no, no. she already knew about it. Like it wasn't personal at all. Um, but airing that out instead of letting it fester in your mind is better, I find, um, because then you don't have to go off what ifs. Yes. You can just say them and maybe they'll tell you like, yeah, we did replace you because you did this. And maybe you can adjust your behavior or you can be like, well, fuck you guys. That's who I am. And I'll find a group of friends that like me. See how real we get on the show, man? Yeah. Who else is going to tell you this kind of shit? Come I don't on. know. Come on though. Dude, I'm very open. I, f I just feel like living your life openly, unapologetically, unap but like adjusting when enough people are like, hey, you should you do this thing that's that people take offense to and- I don't think you're meaning to, to offend anyone. It's also helpful, dude. Like, it's like helpful, yeah. That's why I think we're at where we're at with our relationship is because when we come up with these issues, yeah, we immediately dig in and figure out what's going on. Right. And we get the bullet out and then we clean the wound and then it's like we move on. Yeah. But a lot of we nip it in the people butt. don't and then they have these wrecked, um, constant recurring arguments 
Yeah, with each other. Because they never figured out the root of it. And then they keep moving on in life, and then they keep on. It, you develop more arguments in life, and then you just have a fucking landscape of minds everywhere. Like you use all that as evidence to support your case of why this person is the most evil person. And so going home at night, you're walking through a minefield instead of coming into a place that you love with the person that you love. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. And so for you, if your guy friends replaced you, but you say that you don't she's like well to be fair i don't talk i didn't reach out to them right reach out to them mm-hmm. like Ask them say, what's going on. hey just don't want to clear the air you know like i just feel like we've gotten distant or i feel like things have gotten cold like just want to make sure everything's cool like are we cool and uh, they might be like whoa i haven't heard from you we were wondering what's going on yeah maybe i've had they, this happen to me yeah many times maybe they, you the think way. that they're mad at you they think you're mad at them or dude they all that shit yeah or i haven't talked to somebody in a while and then they think hey are we cool and i'm like yeah what's what's up with you and they're like oh well i hadn't heard from you yeah. And it's like, well, you didn't reach out to me either. Right. But that right. happens a lot, bro. It happens so much. Yeah. And it feels so much better just to get that conclusion. I feel like when everything's open, that's when I get so much anxiety and and my thoughts go to the worst places because I just don't know. And so anything could be the thing. Anything. It could be that they all hate me. It could be that it was just miscommunications. We don't, But I don't know unless I say something. Exactly. So... Reach out. Don't be afraid to reach out. Make it a new thing that you do that you just immediately confront that when you when you feel that way. And I find that you'll live a much less heavy life. Like you'll it, you'll feel a lot lighter. It will help you. Mm-hmm. Good luck. Thanks for writing. Uh, learning to be vulnerable. Hi, Nikki and Steve. My original letter was way too long. I know you two don't want to read my sob story, so I'll cut to the chase. Oh my gosh, this still seems <laughs> really <laughs> long. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try to skim through this. My family dynamic is and has always been shit. My parents should have divorced a long time ago, yet they're still together. My brother has no aspirations and and is an inconsiderate asshole. My dad is really sick and probably doesn't have much longer to live, and I'm not close to any of them. Despite living in the same house, I rarely see my dad, and I talk to him even less. My brother does not seem to care about anything but his computer games when he's playing online with friends, which is all the time. Aside from the possibility that my mom will disown me when I tell her that I want to teach in Japan instead of South Korea, she's okay. I don't know if it's because I was raised in I don't know if it's because I wasn't raised in a harmonious lovey-dovey white household like Steve or if this is just a me thing but I struggle with being vulnerable I feel uncomfortable when my mom hugs me I'm not even confident I'll be able to say I love you to my dad in his final days not just because of my own problems but also because he himself has never been an affectionate or emotional man so you can imagine how awkward it would be for both of us to suddenly start doing that I'm currently 24 but that's not all, folks. The few friends I've made in my life have not been the most dependable and comforting when I've tried to be more open about these things. And for some reason, it's really hard to make friends when you're an adult. It's especially daunting for me to invest time into new friendships when many of the friends I've made in the past low-key Marie Kondo me in place of friends they better connect with. Wow. You should you should talk to the other person that wrote to us. Dude, you can Marie Kondo could people. Be... <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> and you should if they're toxic. It's a great line. You honestly should. But I'm sorry that happened I to you. I have done that, by the way. Same. I'm an introvert, so that makes me invest. Uh, so that makes my invested time into the relationship all the more meaningful, and it hurt. It hurts to have friends slowly grow distant after I've reached a comfortable stage to strip down my walls and be more personal with them. It kind of sounds like I might be a loser and a crybaby at this point, and maybe that's why I don't spark joy anymore. But I swear I'm really cool and funny. I just really like Pokemon and crying to wholesome Disney movies. Okay, I am a loser and crybaby, but I'm really cool too. <laughs> I say. I say all this to give background information for my question. My question. My biggest concern is that I will have difficult a difficult time developing a relationship and managing my family. I'm not worried about being a good mother, but more so being comfortable with communicating physical and verbal love to both my partner and my children. So here's the question. Can you guys be my friends and or engage with me in a poly... Poly, polygamous, sorry, a polygamous relationship with me. Absolutely. Just kidding, just kidding. In all seriousness, I'm interested in hearing what your thoughts are on vulnerability in families, friendships, and or relationships. Example, how you handle being vulnerable in different group dynamics and how you may have struggled and overcame it. And perhaps any steps or advice on how to become more comfortable and confident in being vulnerable with other people. As a side note, I've only been in one relationship so far and I'm very much a hopeless romantic that only wants to date seriously. So relationships are even are an even slower process for me. Your girl ain't got no time for these games and let's this nintendo snap if all else fails i think i'm okay living the rest of my life with a bunch of dogs a dog farm with just me and my dogs feel free to visit this ended up being long too i'm sorry and i hope it all makes sense on a happy note i love you guys and i look forward to your baby please give give me pregnant nikki in 2020 baby xoxo melody we love you melody we love you melody Um, please you're funny yeah you are funny and we please accompany all polygamy questions with a photo thank you for the future yeah. um i'll try not to botch that joke next time right 
God. Uh, you did it. You did it. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, man. You sure you want this? What was the question? Oh, the question is like, <laughs> how do you, uh, the vulnerability in families and friendships and relationships, and will the fact that her family was not emotionally available affect her ability to be emotional, emotionally available? My family was also not emotionally available. I don't know where you got the I was raised in a harmonious household thing. Maybe because I do bits on JK News about it. But uh, yeah. but no, that's not what, what what my experience was. I grew up in a very yelly household. Um, yelly. With a uh, very scared. Angry. Very scared mother. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but she showed you a lot of love. Oh my God, yes. Right, like my she would never disown you. Is a wonderful woman. Like yes. she said, her mom might disown her if she wants to pursue teaching in Japan instead of South Korea. Right. So, um, yeah, that's that's a toughie. Yeah. Um. I guess the answer I feel, and again, I'm not an expert. You should see a therapist, but you really should see a therapist. I think everyone should see a therapist, but. My answer is yes, it will affect how you show emotions to your children because our past and how we were raised always affects it, it in some way. However, because you're able to be aware of it and learn and you have a desire to be able to freely express emotions with your, your kids and your partner, I don't see it being an issue that you can't that you won't be able to do that. I don't. Yeah. I think you're able to do that. The fact that you even want to do that makes me feel like you have all that love and and stuff in you. Like so, being able to break down walls and express it is just the only obstacle for you. I think you you're, you being afraid of it is evidence that you'll you'll try to work on that. Yeah. I'm, a lot of people can't self diagnose this kind of shit, man. And then those totally. are the people to be really w- worried about. A lot of people just think that that's the way and that that's how it should be. My mom and dad did that to me, so I do that yep. to my kids. So I belt kids my kids or whatever. Yeah, and it's it's really healthy for you to want to break the cycle, for you to recognize that like, hey, I wish I had more love as a child. And so I'm going ho- to correct that. Yeah, I'm going to correct that. So and- that's exactly the why. I don't yell at Nikki ever. I, be- I mean, barely ever, ever, ever. Because I heard my dad yell at my mom so much as a kid that I was like, I will never be like that. I will never do that shit. Yeah. And so I withhold all of that shit. If I even come close to where I would yell, I just, I just, I'm like, nope, that's not who I am. That's not what I'm going to do. Yeah. I still yell. You sure do. <laughs> that's not I, something. But what's hard for me is that I don't even know I'm yelling I when know. I'm doing it. And then you're like, I'm not yelling. And I'm yeah. like, oh my God. I'm like, you want to is... see yelling? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, At least you know. Yeah. That yeah. You do that. And I, it's because when I get passionate, my voice raises. It's, it, but it raises when I'm angry. It raises when I'm happy. It yeah. raises when I feel any sort of intense emotion. And that's just the way it comes out. It comes out through tears and a raised volume of my voice. And I am not aware that this volume has been raised until you're like, look, at, I'm not raising my voice at you. And I'm like, I'm not raising my voice at exactly. you either. And see, and that's what my, so growing up, my dad would, he had a stressful job and he would come home and take it out on, on all of us and my mom especially. Yeah. And so I um, I know to, if I'm having a bad day, I don't let that affect Nikki. In fact, I treat her special. So it's like if anybody's going to not – is going to get – special treatment in my life it's her and so i'm gonna even if i have the worst day it's not it's not something i have to slam on her table and be like you know i'm taking it out on you i don't do that i just try to talk to you about it yeah and it's like um well i i feel like i don't try to take things out at you the hard part for me is if i'm having a bad day i need i want to vent it out alone Right. But then sometimes you come in and I'm like, I need to be alone, which is fine. But even that in the beginning, it's snippy, you, you know, you would take it's it not a blast. But I don't know how if I'm already feeling if my emotions are already heightened to the 10th degree. And then uh, the most polite thing I can say is I need to be alone. Right. So first you know? year, that was a weird thing because I didn't understand that. Right. shit. But now I completely get you. And it's like, OK, that's yeah, just how she how is. How to communicate. Right. And so when working on these issues, I think talking about, again conversation communication all of that stuff t- talking and being like hey this is something i'm working on i don't want to yell at you when yes. we're fighting i don't mean to that's not my intention and i was worried that yeah. when i got in a relationship later in life i would be like my father yeah if, if, like in that way i was worried about that as a kid like even as a kid and stuff but i that's why i think my obsession with that made me go the other way mm-hmm. and i think that 
and I love my father. He's a good man and all this stuff. But it's not this is not to slam him. I'm just trying to give context here so that you understand that, that you can break you can break the cycle. Yeah. And because you're having these concerns, I think you'll do better than you think. Yeah. I think you'll make the adjustment. Listen to some Eminem. You know, his dad left him and uh, you know never had contact with him, and his mom always fought with him and had Munchausen syndrome by syndrome by proxy, and he used that to be an amazing father to his daughter because he never wanted his daughter to live that kind of life. And he also used a fuck ton of money to yes. to do that as well. And even then, he feels like he fails her because the fame kept her trapped. Oh right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but hey, shouldn't have sang about her in every single song then. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I you say I fucking Haley in every song. But bro? he's an artist, so he's no, expressing I know. I'm himself. Just saying, I know it's, it's hard. I know, man. He didn't know. Give right. him a break. He's right. trying to break the cycle. See, I think when you break the cycle too, it's messy. I think you you won't have intentions, and then you're just trying, and you're hey, human. Listen, we're very dangerously gonna raise our kid into uh, niche relative internet fame. <laughs> and that's going to be yeah. very s- small percentage stressful for that kid. Yeah. You, you know? want a, a baby 2020? Yeah. You know, when under under when under when 1% of the population knows who you are, <laughs> that can be stressful. It can be pretty stressful. For people. What if he's a popular, what if he's more popular than us? That'd be great. Yeah. I'd be, and or, I'm like, or her. I'm like, oh no, your fame is putting me in a box. I feel <laughs> trapped. <laughs> I just want to go live my life and you're too famous. You're too famous for us now. Now I'm known as so-and-so's mom. Right. I'm not going to spoil the name. We have our name picked we out. We have our name picked out. We're no, not going to say it. You're not going to say it. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, where, where are we talking about? We're talking about vulnerabilities. I think that it's something you can work with a therapist on easily. Like within a few sessions, you'll be able to have exercises, things that you can apply to your normal life that you can st- slowly start practicing being able to share that i love it and yeah good luck with that um wow we have like so many more questions but we are at the end of our session today yeah so sorry come to to those of you who wrote us with the subject line this is an emergency in all caps we'll get to you next time (laughs) all right there's actually some fun ones coming up like crypto question for steve a question for the podcast let's take it it. you want a crypto question i want to take the crypto question all right I don't know if you're ready for this. Crypto question for Steve. Hi, Steve. I just put my first small investment into some crypto, and I had a question of using it in the sense of a savings account, putting small amounts in monthly. Would that be worth it, or should I just buy low and keep stacking it? Thanks, David. David, you're a great man. You made a great decision. Uh, I, I, you know, I have to say the typical tuber thing of like, this is not financial advice. Blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you, you know, it's, I'm not trying to give you financial advice. I I think that this is a worthwhile thing. Yeah, all we can give you is personal experiences and personal opinions based on what we've gone through, which is the whole point of this podcast. None of this is expert stuff. No. You talk to a financial expert, maybe they tell you something different. But tell you some horse shit, I think. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, no, um, do, does he say what kind of a crypto that he purchased? It doesn't say. Okay, interesting. He just says into some crypto. That's the first thing I would tell you is research which crypto. Yes. Make sure that it's really legit. Make sure you believe Bitcoin, in where it's going. Ethereum, and then Ethereum-based tokens can be iffy, so you got to be careful. Um, but Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, like the kind of the, the standard, the top like 50 coins, there's some scams on there, like scammy things on there, so you got to be careful about what you're getting. What would you recommend getting? Um, well, I personally hold Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a coin called Omise Go. Mm-hmm. But that's you know those are those are research decisions that I made, yeah. having like looked at these different things and gone like, hey, I really like what these guys are up to. Yeah. So it's it's really just a matter of that, like picking a project that you think is going to be is going to do well, and really just preparing for what's what's about to happen to the Ethereum space, which is called proof of, proof of stake. Mm-hmm. Which is coming very soon. So, like the the run in 2016, 2017, really 2017, was about mining, right? Everyone wanted to mine Ethereum. Like the run on like computer graphics cards and all this stuff happening, people building mining rigs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Everyone was like, holy shit, you can make a lot of money. It's very profitable to mine Ethereum. Let's all mine Ethereum. And so you couldn't buy a lot of this stuff anywhere. And and everyone started buying Ethereum like mm-hmm. just with credit cards and stuff because the it started to really run. 
What's going to happen next is called proof of stake where um, you'll be able to stake your Ethereum. So if you have 32 Ethereum, you can run run what's called a node and you'll be able to um, stake your coins and earn a certain amount of Ethereum yeah. just for processing transactions on the Ethereum network. So you can make passive income with that. Yeah. And that's what I think the next run's going to be. And that's all going to happen beginning of next year. Um, the Ethereum space, I think, will absolutely explode from people who are excited about the opportunity of making passive income. So do you think that he should use it like a savings account, putting small amounts in monthly? Or should he buy low and keep stacking it? I'm a fan of of dollar cost averaging, which is what he's doing. Mm-hmm. It's it's when you, you put in a certain amount of money every month, no matter what. Yeah. And you just forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you're like, hey, this is money that I'm willing to just forget about. Dude, even if it's Chipotle money. Yeah. Like, just put in some Chipotle money. It's like, right. what would I have spent at Chipotle today? 14 bucks? I'm putting that into Ethereum or whatever th- this month instead. Yeah. And, and, and just forget about it. For me, because I didn't, I don't know anything about the crypto space. That's t- definitely Steve's area. But I did invest in stocks for a while, and the number one thing was believing in the company that you're investing in, like doing a lot of research. So you use your time to like really just research um, that company, where they're going, and notice the trends, like where, like when they have a big announcement, you know that it's going to spike maybe, or if there there suddenly was a scandal, and you know that everything's going to go down, you know, pull out before it goes down like crazy. Yeah. Like just keeping up with that kind of stuff, you just really have to invest some time into it too. Like maybe a half an hour a day, like 30 minutes a day to just keep track of this company and what you're what you're actually investing in. Not just because it's trendy to get cryptocurrency, but because you're actually investing in a company that you think is gonna do something. Hey man, everybody told me Bitcoin was dead. It was at 3,000 bucks and all this shit and people are texting me RIP Bitcoin and shit and now yeah. it's back at 10K. Okay, it was at 13k a month ago. Like, yeah. it, it th- this stuff's not going away. It's only it's an emerging marketplace still, yeah. and, and it's still an emerging technology that not even people are using properly yet, in my opinion. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm glad you're managing that. Hey, yeah. I'm glad you're managing our finances. Cool. Cool. Good agreement. <laughs> we are agreeable people. We, we are strengths and weaknesses. We people. We are strengths and weaknesses people. Yeah, that's very important. And dude, Nikki, you stimulate me so much. Mm. by yeah exactly <laughs> no but with by being interested in stuff like this oh. you're never like people i've known who are just like yeah whatever i don't know i've, I've heard about it whatever like they don't want to even complicate their brains with it or something like mm-hmm. their brains going jogging yeah now. but you're very like what one is that oh that's cool okay what about this 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 is that like this yeah. like you're I don't know, man. I like to know how things work. I know. That's and just I how I am. I like to know you. how people work. I like to know how, why there's so many different types of people, what makes certain people tick, uh, what, you know, makes certain people go, cr- you know, what triggers them. Other than what stuff. a great person you are, that's one of my legit favorite things about you. Thank you. Yeah. That really makes me feel good. Oh, what a sweet note to end on. Yeah. Anyway, uh, final thoughts? Oh, man. Guys, staking tokens are going to be absolutely fucking huge. That's what I think. My final thought is make good friends, be not, be good to them, and then don't worry about them hating you. Because it's probably not true, right? Um, yeah, sure. Right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I can sleep. <laughs> I can sleep at night. <laughs> all right. Make sure to subscribe and rate and all that stuff. It helps that a lot. really helps us out a lot. And also, if you want that bonus episode, you can check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash S T I K K I. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, you can email us your questions at podcast at Nikki.limo. That's podcast at N I K K I dot L I M O. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks, guys.